Fun Gallery was begun in 1981 by Bill Stelling and the underground movie actress Patty Astor. While acting in the movie Wild Style, Patty met graffiti writers like Fab Five Freddy and the Fun Gallery soon became a top showcase for the best in graffiti from Manhattan and Brooklyn. How, how'd you get uh, involved with graffiti? Coming down to the East Village and I was looking at the stuff on the trains and I just I met them at parties. And what you thought it was the most interesting art going or the art that had the greatest potential? Um, well, no, I just thought they were good artists. I know a lot of good artists and I thought they were good artists too. I never really distinguished between graffiti and art, really. Would you, would you consider graffiti a mainstream art or mainstream culture? Well, I don't understand what's the difference between mainstream. I mean, just like the gallery, I never wanted to be considered an alternative space. I don't understand really the meaning of that word. I think that it could be, it can be appreciated by just about anybody. We've had shows all over the world and um, a lot of very, well, I mean, some of these paintings in this show here have already been sold to banks to put in their corporate headquarters. Like this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that a lot of people, see a lot of people when they, we are known a, a lot as a graffiti gallery, although I think as our other artists are starting to get more well known, that's changing. Um, because I never really sought to be a graffiti gallery or market it as graffiti at all, it's just art. And I think that a lot of people when they come down, we finally get them down to the gallery and do a little education, um, they're very surprised by what they see when they get here because they're just expecting a big bunch of throw-ups or something like what you see on the trains. I think if you have something worthwhile to offer, you're going to outlast any trend. And that's one reason why I've always tried to, as I said again, um, just present this just as art because I, w I think that um, it's a big responsibility to tell someone that you think they can be an artist and support them. And I don't have, have no intention of having these guys um, you know, left in the lurch after two years. I think that there's a lot of people around that have every intention of doing that. They don't care. And um, just as I said, there's good artists and there's bad artists. The good ones will last and prevail. Um, we were the first gallery to um, show individual artists from graffiti in individual shows to different that there's not just like graffiti. There's individual people who are artists who have very individual styles that are doing that and we were the first gallery to give them one man shows so that people could see um, their individual styles. My name is actually Fred Brathwaite but all my friends call me F Fab Five Freddy. Yeah, that, re that referred to uh, five graffiti artists? Well mainly the Lexington Avenue number five train which the Fab Five mainly Lee, Doc, Mono and Slade and Slug made famous for doing elaborate um, you know, trains, subway, so whole, whole cars. I haven't done any graffiti since uh, early 1980. Uh, yeah. Basically, what I do now is just uh, produce yeah, and produce and produce, yeah. you know, paintings um, and stuff like that. What, what's the difference of doing it on trains and doing it on canvas? Um, you can't do graffiti on canvas unless you're doing it in an illegal context. Graffiti is it's illegal. It's a crime, and um, it's like it's like it's like a teenage street activity in New York, which is really wholesome. It's like baseball, stickball, punch ball, tag, you know, ring Olivia. It's a street game. Particularly, what I see myself and my f fellow artists that show here at the Fun Gallery, mainly Dondi, Zephyr, and Futuro 2000. What we do is uh, really a lot different from what we've done, or what we basically people just like to throw the word graffiti around because of course it's, it sounds like, you know, illegal or Robin Hood or whatever. But it's not about that for us, you know. Well basically what I'm doing with this show is uh, it's, uh, what I call still life in space, you know. Basically paintings that I wanted to make for a long time but didn't have time to make them because I just was, you know, I did a movie Wild Style and I, make, I made a couple of records. But um, they just came out in about two weeks of painting.
This is Jean-Michel Basquiat, a Brooklyn-born 23-year-old of Haitian-Puerto Rican descent, whose rapid rise from street graffiti artist to international art figure has been one of the cultural wonders of the 1980s. In 1982, the prolific Basquiat seemed to be in every group show on Expressionism, had solo exhibitions at major galleries in Soho, Zurich, and Los Angeles, and still had the energy to produce this large show at the Fun Gallery in New York's East Village. The Fun Gallery specializes in graffiti art, and Basquiat's exhibition was a special event that demonstrates that he still identifies with his unique artistic roots. Graffiti artists express themselves by quickly drawing words and pictures on public walls, and although he has moved to paint on canvas, Basquiat has maintained a similar spontaneous approach. With little inhibition, the self-taught artist splashes paint, draws, crosses out, and draws again. This work is called Jawbone of an Ass, and it has Basquiat's familiar mix of words, pictures, and abstract brushwork. His crude images, like this carnivorous bird, may seem naive, but they reveal basic truths and are filled with knowing humor. On the upper left, Basquiat has crossed out the words Rodin's thinker and has painted a contemplative black youth in a ghetto hat. In the center is a list of names, mostly from ancient history. In simple block letters, Basquiat has written Alexandria, Hector, and Aristophanes, names which not only connote glories of the past, but also remind us of school and our own enculturation. Some names have been crossed out or deliberately misspelled, and when we read the names, we can almost hear their sound. Basquiat creates concrete poetry, and his art has been reproduced in literary publications like the Paris Review. We asked Basquiat about the words in his paintings. Where do the, the words come from? I, it, um, real life books, Re television. Yeah, and you, you just skim them and uh, start including no, I mean, sir, I'm, sir. when I'm working here, I hear them, you know, and I just throw them down. Oh, yeah? Well, I mean, things like Punic Wars, I remember that was in one of your... Oh, that, that, that was from a, a, a guidebook on Roman history. And uh, you, you had been uh, reading it, and... Uh... Well, it, it, was not, it wasn't that long, that actual history part of it. It's like, you know, history of Roman, five pages, you know? Yeah, and, and so you snatched a few words from it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. snatched them, you know. They, they caught your... They caught my eye, and I, you know, and I took them. This painting is another mix of loosely connected notations. With words and pictures, Basquiat plays with the basic theme of anatomy and the human body. Showing his street smarts, he has named this painting Da Vinci's Greatest Hits, an allusion to Leonardo's famous anatomy studies at the Royal Library at Windsor Castle. One body part that Basquiat seems especially fond of is the foot and this painting is filled with disarming, fresh drawings of feet seen from every direction. Basquiat learns about anatomy by studying traditional art, and in the upper right corner there is a reference to the return of the prodigal son and a drawing of the son's leg as he kneels to beg his father's forgiveness. On the left side of the canvas is some abstract brushwork, and below that is a huge leg. The red, blue, and black lines remind us of diagrams on medical charts. The distortions of the foot are especially gross and seem influenced by another childlike artist, Picasso. Below the foot, a man works on a railroad. Hammering spikes is hard work, and it is no wonder this man has a muscular torso. A torso has shoulder blades, ribs, and a spine, as we can see in this carefully labeled anatomical drawing. By focusing on anatomy, Basquiat resurrects a basic mode of art that anyone can relate to. This painting is filled with cleverly drawn pictorial references, and it is funny, smart, expressionistic satire Basquiat about his interest in anatomy. I want to do some anatomy stuff. Uh -huh. And, uh, and then I went out and bought some books that were about anatomy. And then you started imitating. Well, not really imitating, because, you know, 
But I, I, I use them as a, as a source material. Yeah. So why'd you want to do anatomy stuff? Because I felt like it. Because you felt like it? Or just uh, becoming conscious of your own body? <laughs> no, no, just... Uh, just just for, for more, more ac academic references. To juxtapose them with what I do normally. Yeah, and what do you, what do you say you do normally? That you're... The I, I guess, my, I guess my, my first instinct would be to, to do a head. Here, on quilted bedding material, painted a bright yellow and tied to a wooden frame, is the expressive face of a black man. Boskian knows black culture, and this unstretched canvas depicts the black middleweight boxing champion, Sugar Ray Robinson, complete with a crown like those used in graffiti signature tags. Graffiti artists draw their images on any surface, and for Basquiat, this has resulted in an inventive attitude towards the traditional stretch canvas. This canvas has become a hotel with 200 rooms, and it is named after two flea bag hotels and a fancy one on Fifth Avenue. This three-part painting is all about food, and we can again see the playful way Basquiat expresses a basic theme with deceptively simple drawings and words. To the left, he has written swine and poultry, slightly atypical words which seem to imply a double entendre. Since a chicken lays eggs, it's worth dollars, so it is not surprising that this crudely drawn chicken looks frightened. Off to the right is some pork dressed in a top hat and monocle. Basquiat probably copied this picture from a comic book or animated cartoon. The pig may look sophisticated, but he better not forget that he's 100% pure meat, and that means he's worth money. When we visited Basquiat's downtown studio, we talked about the content of one of his recent canvases and gained new insight into the way this amazing young artist fuses far-flung imagery into striking, humorous, expressive paintings. Let's just uh, go, go through. What's, what's this? It's Pluto. That's, Based on a, a drawing that was a, the first drawing of the moon by Galileo. Oh. And so this is actually an image of, of the moon there. But actually, it's an image. Actually, it's actually an image of the moon. No, it's based on a drawing of the moon, but it's an image of Pluto. Yeah. This looks like an eye. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's the evil eye, the Malocchio. Oh. And uh, and below there, what what what's this down the that, way? That's a Roman belt buckle. This is, this says parasites. Parasites. Yeah. And uh, what? Why do you? What par parasites meaning people? No, or meaning 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 parasites. Yeah. Meaning parasites. So so when you're when you're working on, on this how this Roman buck, belt buckle, how how did you decide to? Oh, that, that, that's from a drawing. I, I did it at the Metropolitan, of Roman belt buckle that was bronze. Uh, and so, you just decided you wanted to put a Roman belt buckle there and went to your drawing. No, I wanted to put a belt. Roman Bell on this painting, right? I had the idea to do it, and then I went all the way to the Metropolitan Museum, and I just did the drawing of the buckle, and I came back with it, and I put it right there. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of a slow process. Well, I'm a slow person.